ICC UAE makes it possible. As Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning and good afternoon to some of our uh, partners who have joined us from abroad. Uh, I'm delighted to join you at this very important webinar on open account operation. Unfortunately, I could not attend the last webinar on the topic held on 23 October 2020 as I was hospitalized due to COVID-19. But uh, fortunately, and for the prayer of all my well-wishers and friends, and uh, we have come out, uh, now I'm okay, uh, Alhamdulillah. This is the second webinar that we are organizing on this topic jointly with a Asian Development Bank and ICC UAE. The, the first one, was with the bankers and as a follow-up. Today, we are having panelists representing ready-made garment industry, leather sector, pharmaceuticals, plastics, and as well as banks. In traders, exporters, and importers are facing difficulties with the preparing, shipping, and receiving goods, making and receiving payments and cancellations of orders, and commitments failures. Huge cash crunch and failure to comply with their leading institutions' obligation. In this evolving and increasingly uncertain environment, banks, traders, and policymakers have become anxious and skeptical about the interpretation of certain situations of commitment values within the regulatory framework and guidelines. According to the ICC Global Trade Finance Survey 2020, global trade flows have tripled from US dollar 6.2 trillion to US dollar 18.1 trillion. By end of 2019, growth now widely acknowledged as having been enabled by trade financing. Trade finance is, is the oxygen that keeps trade flows alive, particularly for emerging markets like Bangladesh. According to Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers, and Exporters Association, BGMEA, due to COVID shutdown, international buyers have either canceled or suspended 3.16 billion, 3.16 billion watt of shipments involving 1,142 factories affecting 2.26 billion workers. In financial year 20, export earnings have registered a sharp decline of nearly 17% at 33.67 billion due to cancellation and or reduced export orders of garments, which ac accounts for 84% of the total national exports and 14% of GDP. <coughs> Excuse me. During July, February period of the current fiscal year, according to receipts, have declined 1.5% year on year, and US dollar 25.86 billion as the surge of COVID pandemic continues to ravage demand. With the celebration of 50 years of independence of Bangladesh has stepped into a new journey as it has qualified to graduate into a developing nation from this developed country. Until 2026, the country will continue to enjoy trade benefits as an LDC for the aviation interim period. However, after graduation, Bangladesh will lose the benefits for, uh, of LDCs, such as soft loans and export facilities. According to the latest perspective plan 21 to 41, Bangladesh is likely to lose 7 billion watt of export earnings annually. Around 70% of the Bangladesh's export is conducted under preferences given by some developed and developing nations under the LDC criteria. Back-to-back -back payment would be settled on receipt of final payment on maturity. Uh, and uh, and I, I, I would consider that this is a good initiative on the part of the central bank. And um, 
but however, it is not complete by itself. It, 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 it has to take a lot of other parallel initiative for that reason. <coughs> Under the circumstances, Bangladesh Bank Circular issued on 30th June, the conditional open account transaction is a good initiative, as I have said already. However, the only introduction cannot ensure benefits. All stakeholders need to work to optimize benefits. <coughs> Excuse me. According to the SAPLA, the export under open account credit terms is a modified version of financing under factoring and supply chain to export against their export external undertaking. The policy will help the exporters to access the appropriate finance up to the well addition <coughs> portion. Back-to-back <coughs> -back payment would be settled on receipt of final payment on maturity. The facility offered under the changed policy has been in operation for the last seven months. I understand that the exporters still prefer export through letters of credit instead of open account. Moreover, the banks are yet to have arrangements with international factory, with international factoring companies, foreign banks, foreign financial institutions, trade financing and insurance entities for international export factory. I'm sure that during today's deliberation, our distinguished speakers will highlight the key issues that are being faced by both exporters and bankers. This will hopefully help our central bank policymakers to address the issues and make changes that may facilitate export payment transactions. I would like to thank Asian Development Bank, ICC UAE, for their continuous support to ICC Bangladesh in organizing webinar and global awareness on open account, export transactions, and recent policy changes in Bangladesh. I look forward to have further collaboration with Asian Development Bank in promoting international trade finance of Bangladesh. I understand some 400 plus participants from 20 countries have registered and are attending this event. I also thank our media for covering our event from every now and then. Thank you very much, everyone present. And I only look forward for those uh, who could not even um, um, join up to now. We, uh, welcome, Mr. Fudlulak, the chairman of the Prime Fashion. And also, um, Nassim is already there. And I, I am only looking forward because he's a very important player. Uh, the, uh, uh, Dr. Rubana Hawk um, uh, is uh, the chairman, uh, president of the Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Exporters Association. Thank you. Thank you very much. much all for those who have signed the register. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so thank much. You. Thank you very much, uh, President uh, President Rathman, President International Chamber of Commerce Bangladesh, uh, for really setting the scene so clearly for us, and also for giving us hope uh, to see you so well after such a challenging time and having you back giving us guidance and leadership. We really appreciate it. Now, moving on to the Chairman of the ICC Banking Commission uh, and the CEO of the Bangladesh International Arbitration Centre, BIAC. Um, we, I call him Chairman Ali, but sometimes when we're together, I call him Muhammad Ali, because sometimes uh, we can say he floats like a butterfly and occasionally stings like a bee. Uh, so Chairman Ali, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent. I promise you I'm not going to sting today. Uh, the, <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> the President of ICC Bangladesh, our Honorable Mr. Mahabubu Rahman, Mr. Stephen Beck, Head of Trade, uh, and supply chain of the Asian Development Bank. Our moderator, Mr. Vincent O'Brien, who I think considering his name, I must greet on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> the world celebrated yesterday. Thank you very much. And our keynote speaker, Dr. Prashant Banerjee, a well-known academic on the, of the financial sector and distinguished speakers and our distinguished audience. 
Welcome to the ICC Bangladesh webinar on awareness of open account transactions and recent policy changes. And we have with us to discuss this vital issue for Bangladesh, because you all know how important exports are to the country. Uh, uh, two groups of people who are, I would say, the users, a group user and the other who administer the open accounts. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting discussion from that, I can presume. From the business world, we have uh, we, are, uh, we are absolutely delighted to have a group of people who are very important in the sector. Dr. Rubana Haq, President of BGMA, um, uh, Mr. Nasim Manzoor, President, former President of MCCI, Mr. Fazlul Haq, former Chairman of BKMEA, uh, Mr. Uh, Jashimuddin, President of Plastic Goods Exporters Association, and Mr. Naimul Zuda, Chief Finance Officer of Inceptor Farm Restrictors. As you can see, this almost covers 100% can lead to what this whole purpose of this whole ex exercise is, to come to some consensus or suggest solutions and recommend certain directions. The policy, uh, policy makers and decision makers may pursue to make this system of open account export more effective. This will certainly lead to cost efficiencies the industry and the banks are both looking for, which will increase the volume of export and contribute to the economic growth of the country. However, we must not lose sight of the potential risks. And we have seen what can happen uh, uh, during the pandemic. We had some issues in the RMG industry which, uh, which does make it important for us to look at the, at the other side of the, the issues also and look at what may happen if there are if we do not cover those risks. For example, dispute resolution is a, is a good risk which should be covered through, through a process of ADR. And mm -hmm. uh, there can be other risks also which the bankers can better say. I am speaking from my hat as a chairman as the uh, chief executive of Bangladesh Arbitration Center, where we do ADR for the commercial world. And if there are issues in open and trade where you have a dispute, you can refer for that. You must make sure that your contracts contain that clause, which allows you to go for ADR. So that's what I wanted to say. I'll leave the talking and the discussions to the people who have come here and the people want to listen to. But on this very special day for the country, when we as a nation celebrate the 100th birth anniversary. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Chairman Ali. Uh, and of course, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, the risks need to be considered. The opportunities seem huge, but we need to be aware uh, of the risks. And we're all working in partnership, uh, all working in partnership to the same goal, promoting trade in Bangladesh. And the Asian Development Bank has been a very solid partner in Bangladesh, working with the trade sector in keeping trade finance credit lines open, helping cover risk and also providing liquidity to the trade banking sector. So our next speaker on the program is Mr. Uh, Stephen Beck uh, of the Asian Development Can Bank. I? Um, oh, yes. Ali, Vincent, please. just one more word. Of course. I forgot, to, I forgot to mention my very good friend and my colleague, Sayyid Mahabubur Rahman, the uh, chief executive of Mutual Trust Bank, to whom, whom I am eternally grateful for supporting um, BIAC and ICC. Thank you for coming, Mahabub. Please, Vincent, I, the floor I, is yours. I, Sorry about this. No, no, that's okay. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Ali, and, and very important. Indeed. So now um, I will be joined by Stephen Beck. ADB, we're looking forward to hearing from you and your insights to get us moving. Thank you. Thanks very much, Vincent. Nice to see you. Glad to nice know that you're well. <laughs> Good. And uh, thank you very much uh, to Mr. Rahman. Uh, glad to know that, uh, that you are well, sir. Um, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, Dr. Banerjee, uh, the Central Bank, um, ICC Bangladesh. ICC UAE, uh, uh, 
Bibim um, and all the panelists and participants. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. Um, ADB gladly supports the activities uh, to develop awareness and to fully leverage the opportunities brought by the Open Account Export Transaction Scheme, which was introduced by uh, the Bank of Bangladesh uh, last year. Um, we uh, have organized the first um, of the joint webinar series with the ICC, uh, Bangladesh and ICC UAE, uh, back in October. Uh, uh, at that time, the focus was more on, on banks um, and how uh, they would uh, be able to take advantage of this, uh, this new open account scheme um, and, and what needs uh, they have. But now, today, uh, we're very pleased to participate in the second joint uh, webinar, which of course is aiming not so much at banks, but more at the uh, at exporters uh, of key industries in Bangladesh um, to better understand uh, your needs uh, on uh, on how to make the most of uh, of this scheme. Um, after that, uh, representatives of local and international banks would share their views on solutions to address these uh, or the bottlenecks to implement such solutions on the ground. Uh, we continue to work with uh, the central bank. Um, and with ICC Bangladesh and our partner banks in Bangladesh to help in this transition period through such webinars and trainings as needed. We hope that you find uh, the session useful. And once again, thank you so much for uh, partnering with ADB uh, on this initiative. I'd also like to thank my colleague, Jan Sutkin, um, who uh, manages our business in Bangladesh um, who's doing uh, an excellent uh, job. Thank you so much. And if you'll excuse me, it's 5.30 in the morning, my time. So I'm going to hit the pillow um, and Jan is going, to, uh, is going to step in. So uh, thank you so much again, uh, an honor and a, and a privilege. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, Stephen, uh, for joining us uh, at this hour. Well, uh, you definitely don't need your beauty sleep. You're looking really good, good today. So uh, keep it <laughs> I'll, up. I'll, I'll buy you a... Uh, an orange juice for that, Vincent. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. Well, moving on from the ADB and getting down to business. And uh, I'm kind of a little bit sad to hear that one of my friends uh, and colleagues, uh, Mr. Humian Kabir, Executive Director of Bangladesh Bank, who did the presentation on our, our previous event, unfortunately cannot be with us today. He's, he, he's a little bit unwell. But we're also very fortunate we're very fortunate that, that the keynote address, the substance of the circular, the implications of the circular will be presented by Dr. Prashant Banerjee, Professor and Director, Bangladesh Institute of Bank Management, BIBM. So this is what we need to pay attention to because this is what we will be discussing afterwards. So uh, Dr. Banerjee, over to you, please. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mr. Vincent Tupai. Very respected two personality. One is Mr. Mahbubu Rahman, President, International Chambers of Commerce. Mr. Mohammed A. Rumi Ali, Chairman, ICC, Bangladesh Banking Commission. Besides a uh, number of designated personality from the corporate sector, and as well as from the banking sector, I express my regards to all but definitely executives from the International Chambers of Commerce. Again, my express thanks and regards to all of them who has presented me, who has invited me to talk about the International Factory. Equally, I am giving thanks to Mr. Atta Rahman, Secretary General of ICC Bangladesh to invite me. Traditionally, letter of credit and subsequent, we have gone for the documentary collection in International Trade Finance. Now, corporate sector, not only in Bangladesh, but across the world, they're facing the problem in case of letter of credit. What is the problems? Although it is known to everybody, but let me take the definition, the scope of regulation. Problem is that if somebody wants to import the letter under the letter of credit, they need to open the letter of credit. And opening letter of credit means giving security, giving guarantee, giving margin. 
and number of priorities are involved with the letter of credit, so issuing bank, collecting bank, presenting bank, number of priorities. Moreover, under the letter of credit, you, have, you, you don't have the scope, country like Bangladesh to, to import under the users bill. We need to import the most in the side B. And importer need to bear the cost of opening the letter of credit. Documentary collection also. And one more important problem is that a great problem in the letter of credit, that is for each occasion, if I want to import five times in a month, I need to open the letter of credit. So for coming up from this situation all over the world, open account, as it is mentioned, very respected, Mr. Mahabur Rahman, President ICC. I mean, international trade now they are moving for the open account. Now open account, what is the problem? In case of open account, it is the heaven for the importer, but it is the definitely very painful for the exporter because goods should be exported under the credit, but there is no guarantee from the other side that is either this money will be coming after three months or four months. So depending on that, Bangladesh understood these pains even 10 years back. Then we have started the work. And in this case, ICC deserved thanks. First time in our recent export policy, international factoring was included as a permitted method for the international trade. So it is the first initiative that government has given the green signal. And at the same time, Ministry of Commerce has given a direction to the Bangladesh Bank to offer the international factory. And subsequently two committee has been formed. One is the technical committee and other one is the core committee. Core committee was headed by our honorable uh, different governor, Mr. Ahmed Jamal. And fortunately I was heading the technical committee and Mr. Atha Roman, secretary general of ICC was also the member of this committee. Now this committee has given a uh, manual and based on this manual in 2020, June 30, Bangladesh Bank has given a circular. Now just I'm taking the scope to talk about the, that is interesting factoring very briefly, how it is, how it is, how it is working. Now let me take the example, brief example that say uh, Apex Group, they are exporting the product, they are exporting the product to the say Thailand under the letter of credit. But all of a sudden, importer from Thailand, they have asked for uh, international factory in place of letter of credit. I mean, importer of the Thailand, they don't want to give the letter of credit and why they don't interest to give the letter of credit, I have already mentioned. So in this situation, so let me take the example, say Dhaka Bank, they have the full place factoring system and they have the member of the FCI, or, or they have the other alternative also, they have the arrangement with the foreign banks or they have the arrangement with the insurance company. Now, if Apex will go, this organization, then they will be asking for few information because factoring and supply chain financing, it is depending on the earlier relationship. So here they, they will be asking the at least four information, say who's the importer, full address, their what is the maximum credit limit limit they are and how many years they have the relation now after having this i mean information then uh dhaka bank as they are the member of the fci or they are the member of the other networks they will be sending this information to the import factor or importer banks in the in the importers country then importers country, they can give you the green signal or they can say no. But if they will say the green signal, meaning is that, that is if importer will not pay the money, then import, import factor is totally responsible. But in case of credit clicks, to pay the money to the Dhaka bank. Now, after having this green signal from the import factor or importer banks, then Dhaka Bank will be transmitting this information to the, to the exporter. Exporter will be exporting the product. Now, after exporting the product, they will be uh, submitting the documents. But what is the major, you can say that major change has come in 2020, June uh, 30, that goods, title of the goods can be sent to the importer directly. Earlier, it was not permitted. So it is the major change we got. That is exporter 
they can change, they can send the all types of documents to the importer directly. Now, after shipment, uh, one set of documents definitely they will be sending to the importer and two set of documents they will be submitting to the Dhaka Bank. Now there are two, in, the, in this circular, Bangladesh Bank definitely kind enough, they have kept the two options. One is that export factor can finance immediately after submit, submitting the documents or that is organization like trade with foreign factors. They can also supply under the supply chain financing. So there are two options. Local banks can finance after submitting the documents or, I mean, foreign banks, foreign factors, they can finance. But here, Bangladesh Bank categorically has mentioned that finance must be without uh, recourse. I mean, either importer pay the money or not. Exporter, either import factor will send the money to the export factor or not. Export factor, I mean, Dhaka Bank cannot demand the money from the exporter what is already paid. So uh, at this stage, uh, we have, uh, as I have mentioned that, say finance has gone to the exporter. So what is the benefit of the exporter? Benefit is that although they have sold the product on open account, but they got the money immediately after shipping the product. And uh, although it is open account, but there is no mix as they got the money immediately after the exporting the product. And as it is mentioned very categorically in the, uh, I mean, circular, it is without recourse. Now, what is the normal procedures? Import factor will be collecting the money. And if import factor uh, collect the money, they will be sending this money to the export factor, I mean, Dhaka Bank. And Dhaka Bank will be giving this money to the corporate sector who has exported the product to the importer. So this is the brief mechanism. Here, regulation is that, that is the, if it is under the total factory, then there is a rule, it is called GRIPS, General Rules for International Factory. But in the occasion where importer will not pay the money to the import factor, and if you import factor will not pay the money to the Dhaka Band export factor, there is a scope for the arbitration also. Now, this is the mechanism very briefly I have mentioned. Now, you see that what is the benefit? Why ICC, they are trying to promote the international factoring or supply chain financing? Because if you want to export, increase our export, we need to support our importer. Now, you see that if importer, without opening the letter of credit, without giving the margin, without giving the security, by keeping this under a limit, say 10 million or $5 million, they can import even 10 times in a day also, and all transactions under the open account. And there is no requirement to satisfy the opening bank, issuing bank, collecting bank, confirming bank. There is no requirement for the confirming bank also. So personally, I believe that, I am convinced that cost of the trade will be dropped in case of international factoring, or as I have mentioned, the mechanism that is suggested by the Bangladesh Bank. Now, let me just tell that what circular has very, although I have mentioned few sentences about the circular, but uh, in circular, you'll be finding that what are the change uh, they have brought Bangladesh Bank. Now you see in circular first, it is mentioned that, that is title is the open account. I think you can see open account credit terms, the title of this. Now in the open accounts credit term, as I have mentioned, who can give the guarantee? Bangladesh Bank very particularly mentioned that guarantee of other country can be given by the international factoring companies, foreign banks, foreign financial institution, trade financiers, insurance entities. So open account is not alone only. Now it must be guaranteed by the third party. But if international factoring is there, what is the benefit? Benefit is that they will be giving, it is not for the event wise, not only for the one export and import transaction. It will be given for a particular period, say one month guarantee will be given by the import factor. Now, Bangladesh Bank again has mentioned that, the, I mean, what should be the minimum criteria that insurance company and they will be giving the guarantee. Bangladesh Bank has mentioned that, Now we look at that in this, they must be licensed of central banks. I mean, any organization cannot, if they will give the guarantee, it will not be accepted. License of central bank, competent authority for whose they make joint globally recognized 
professional bodies having representation of the services. So this is the Bangladesh Bank has mentioned. Now Bangladesh Bank, secondly, what mentioned, you, you look at that, what I'm uh, kindly look at that, it is non-recourse basis. What is the meaning of that? I think everybody you are understanding, if it is financed by the export factor, or I mean, uh, abroad, any organization say import factor uh, or export factor from Bangladesh, it can be financed by the AD also, or import factor from other country also, then it must be non-recourse. It means that it is paid to the exporter. And if money will not be coming to the bank, even after this bank cannot pay for this money. Now, after having this uh, about the charge, what Bangladesh Bank has mentioned, here we have a concern. I think uh, so suggestion will be coming. That is if factoring or open account will not be connected with the export development EDF or any fund can be created by the ADB, then cost will be higher. So that's why here they have mentioned that what should be the cost? Six month US LIBOR plus 3.5% annual. So this is the cost they have mentioned. But of course here, only the discount fee and that is the risk premium only. But other charges is not included here. Now, this is the, uh, as I have already mentioned, this is the, actually, this is the turn around of our international trade practice. Here, Bangladesh Bank very categorically mentioned that documents can be sent to the importer directly. I mean, earlier it was sent through the bank, but it can be sent now importer directly so the importer can take out these goods very quickly, uh, but they are feeling that if it will go through the banks, it will take time. and all transaction will be it can be it will be accepted through the electronic transaction and if it is under the factoring they, they have the platform it is called eda factor electronic data interchange platform i i think icc and fci they are doing work very uh, they are complementary with each other they are working together so here electronically all transaction will be done they have, they have the platform if somebody is the member of these organizations they will be getting permission to get the access of this platform. So all transaction will be done uh, through the electronically. Uh, as I have already mentioned, AD, AD also can finance, but in Bangladesh, number of transactions, number of banks, now they are the member of the FCI. Dhaka Bank is the member of the FCI Bank, Asia, Eastern Bank, and other banks also. But AD, now they, are, they cannot finance because cost is, cost is higher. Here, I think uh, my humble request to the ICC and uh, ADB also. Here, there is a scope is there to form a fund or to just connect the factoring or open account trade with the EDF fund, export development fund, so that cost of fund will be going down. Uh, so this is the uh, circular mess, main message. I think I have tried to communicate what is the mechanism of the interest factoring and what is the circular uh, set, uh, what is given in the 2020 June. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'll, be, I'll be presenting the question answer session. If you need question, I'll be very happy to respond the answer. So thank you very much for giving me time. So Mr. Vincent. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Do Doc Dr. Prashanta uh, Banerjee. Uh, you covered uh, so much information and uh, so clearly it was really of exceptional value and provides us with uh, a lot of food for thought. Uh, yes, the question of uh, what without recourse uh, really means is always uh, an interesting question. And regarding the costs, I'm really looking forward to hear what the bankers have to say when we take it up with them a little bit more and we get some more uh, insights. Before we move on to the grassroots level for discussion observations uh, for those involved in the export industry from various sectors, uh, from various sectors, we have one poll question for you, only one, and it will pop up in a few moments. And the reason we're having this poll question is regarding, we're trying to look at the gender balance in participation in this event, other events, but also in actively in trade finance. So Habib, if you are uh, available, uh, maybe we can up the poll uh, question. And uh, Doctor, sure. but, but, uh, do you need to stop the share screen first or? Yes, I think if we can uh, stop the sharing screen, that would be better. Uh, that would I will be stop better. it now. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you very much. Very efficient. Uh, okay, and here great. we are going with the poll question. Okay, lovely. I'll Let's be launching it now. Now. 
Okay, uh, following ADB's commitment to advancing gender equality, we would like to understand the gender of the people participating in our trainings trainings and request that you kind of respond to the following question okay uh, male female uh, I, I i i i think i uh, i i i it's up to you but i i think it's a pretty easy choice for you to make and uh, i would say we have more male here on this program but just just uh, tick the box and i see some people are submitting already so that is actually wonderful and uh, i guess we'll give it another minute or so while i'm making a little sure. introduction and i'll come back to you habib in a moment sure. Uh, so having heard from uh, Dr. Prashanta Banjari, and not alone did he talk about the circular, he explained the background and the operations of the product. It was really, really wonderful. So now getting down to grassroots level, which was not available in our last webinar, so we're listening to you. So discussions and ob observations for those at grassroots level involved in the business and per our program, we're going to start off and I want to get feedback, observations, recommendations, insight, starting with uh, Dr. Rubana Hook, uh, President Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Export Association, BGMEA. Doctor, are you with us? The uh, internet connection is not working, so she is okay. probably she will not okay. be able to join. Okay. Thank you, thank, thank you, Atar. Uh, so the program was correct. So now moving on to our, our second speaker, uh, and this is Faisal Hook, uh, ICC Bangladesh Executive Board Member and former President of Bangladesh Knitwear Manufacturers and Exporters Association. You are someone that has a lot of experience in this and what's happening. So really, over to you, uh, Faisal Hook. Interested yeah. in your feedback. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and uh, I think we, we missed the uh, the most valuable uh, speaker, Dr. Rubana Hawk. Uh, she could even uh, contribute more than me. And uh, but it is uh, uh, my pleasure to participate. And thank you, ICC uh, uh, Dubai and ICC Bangladesh to organize this uh, uh, joint venture. And uh, uh, anyway, so uh, the situation is that the market is demanding more factoring. This is this is the. Straight away, uh, this demand is increasing because buyers are now, uh, no, uh, nobody wants to go with the LC. That is, I think, uh, most of the buyers, they are not go, going for LC. Uh, they are going for open account. Sometimes they issue sales contract, sometimes not. But this is open account is becoming more popular and more obvious for the exporters to ex accept. You know, this is uh, almost all the buyer's uh, choice. So we have very little to argue, very little to counter uh, uh, our choice. So, uh, so finally, the thing is that, that we have to go for the factory. But unfortunately, factoring uh, as an exporter, I think it is not uh, organized at all, the factoring service organized at all in Bangladesh. Uh, the few uh, foreign companies uh, from uh, uh, UK, US, and many other parts, they're offering the factoring services. And there is no, uh, I think, the, no unified rate. So somebody is asking whatever they actually want, and uh, uh, and uh, depending on the situation. And I, I so far, I, I I understand and I observe that a couple of banks, local banks, they try to tie up with the those factoring company who are uh, directly also offering us. So that actually not uh, <clears throat> helping that much because that maybe to some extent can increase the cost at the exporter's end because then the, the, uh, the, the profit sharing is being, uh, the number of profit share are becoming uh, uh, more than before. So uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the factoring is a must. We have uh, no doubt about that. We need it and the demand is growing. But what we feel that, that any, any Bangladeshi company in particular, if any banks, they can, if they can come up with a service, international standard service at a very competitive, uh, uh, competitive uh, rate, because the competitive rate is very, very much needed because uh, our price, especially in the government sector, price is coming uh, lower, 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 especially after uh, uh, Corona, it is even, it is becoming worse. They're reducing price, they're reducing quantity, they're uh, offering us even uh, uh, higher uh, terms of deferred payment, let's say, from 90 days, it goes up to 180 days, even up, up to some extent. So uh, even if the factory costs become very high, then finally we will be, we are becoming almost uh, uh, less competitive. And uh, if the factory costs become very high, so we'll be more and, uh, and less competitive in the market. So that is, I think that the challenges we, we are facing that uh, we, are, we are just uh, uh, having some couple of uh, and we, we, we cannot really recognize how, how 
uh, trustworthy they are, how famous they are in their in their field. And Bangladesh Bank uh, is here. They can formulate a policy that uh, you know that's a. They can uh, make. Uh, uh, I think their kind a kind of the registration with the authority of those factoring company can help us. And Bangladesh Bank also can monitor that what they are what they are charging and what the system. So I think what what I like to say that mm -hmm. you have to organize the whole things. The uh, the the whole model should be organized. There is yeah. a model on paper, but in Bangladesh market, it is still on paper. It is not in the in 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 uh, in a practice. So practice is still a bit disorganized. So that's actually, uh, I think, uh, from uh, the exporter perspective, we want to see that it is going to be organized and the exporters need it badly. And we need a very efficient service in terms of service and in terms with the price of factory. That's all. Thank from you. My Thank you very much, Mr. Faisal Hook, for being so concise and so clear. So yes, uh, we are underway, but it's not really organized properly from your perspective. You see the opportunity and you see the challenges. Thank you very, very much. This was really, really valuable. So moving on to our, our, our next speaker and an, another industry, uh, I'm turning to Saeed Nazim Mansour, who's a, a former uh, president of the Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce and Industries, MCCI, DACA, and managing director Apex Footwear Limited. So again, from the footwear uh, in, industry. So to so Nazim, your your take on this and perspective where we are, where we may need to go, please. Thank you, uh, Vincent. I hope I'm audible. Um, yes, loud and clear. Thank you, uh, President Mabu Rahman, President of ICC Dhaka, uh, Stephen Beck, Vincent O'Brien, Mr. Humayun Kabir, fellow panelists. Salam alaikum and good afternoon. Um, I want to thank, uh, I think, ICC Dubai and ICC Dhaka and ADB for organizing this, uh, because this is truly an existentialist crisis without overstating uh, the reality. Uh, if we just look at the context of this uh, very quickly, um, the double dip recession after the second lockdown in Germany post Christmas, now the third lockdown in Europe that we're seeing, has created an incredible collapse of demand in our most important market of European Union. And if you look at something called the TCF index, which is called the textile clothing footwear retail index, the numbers are frightening. Uh, Germany is minus 22%, Italy is minus 27%, and Spain is minus 35%, which basically means the major exportable items of Bangladesh textile garments, footwear are down in demand. Then if you look at the US, uh, same thing. Uh, there is not only pressure on demand, huge pressure on price. People need lower priced items. So yep. given that context, Vincent, I think yep. we need to also understand how we remain competitive. Now the background, as Mr. Human Kabir correctly said in his paper, uh, you know, the need to update our payment terms has been long felt over the last 10 years. But if you look at the statistics, 2014, 90% of payments for open account transactions done through SWIFT. That's 2014, we're now in 2021. Today, it will probably be closer to 99%. LCs, I'm sorry to say, are obsolete and are a relic of the past. Nobody wants to pay that money. Nobody wants those charges, other than our friends, the bankers, of course, who live on those charges. So, which is why I have very interesting conversations with my friends in the banking world. Now, the advantage of open account, we all know. Simplicity, lower cost with the caveat, as long as everything is going well. Right. And I think that's the most important thing. What happens when it doesn't? The risks that we talked about, I think Mr. Human Kabir said it correctly. Um, these risks can be mitigated by private credit insurance, but the costs are simply too high. Now, Bangladesh government had, Mr. Mahbub Rahman sir knows, export credit guarantee scheme by the government. It's cumbersome, it doesn't work, it's too expensive. The Chinese government and the Indian government uses it perfectly. And they use it as competitive advantage over us. I can tell you from practical example that, you know, we were trying to do a business with a major brand for footwear in the US. And we lost the business to China because they were able to provide credit insurance on that major US brand, who, by the way, have their headquarters in Trump Towers at a significantly lower cost than us. We just couldn't get a credit rating on that company yet. The Chinese were able to provide it. The Indians were able to provide it. So I think this export credit guarantee needs to be worked out. We need to increase the scope and reduce the cost. Now, three risks, um, non-payment after delivery, yep. uh, goods not accepted, and short payment risk. We need to identify workarounds for each of this in the policy. 
these are all practical problems that Fuzzle Bike encounters, we encounter every single day. Uh, we know the cases of uh, importers becoming bankrupt after arrival. We had a case where we shipped $96,000 worth of goods to a US major br uh, brick and mortar retailer, went bankrupt. It cost us $12,000 to bring it back. The $12,000 were mainly air uh, seaport demer charges in Chittagong because the runaround between customs and the bank took three months to clear. Now that's making us non-competitive. It's bad enough we didn't get paid, but that's making you too expensive. Uh, goods not accepted, demerage, this is a major problem, takes longer. And the third one is short payment. This is a fact of life. Now, none of our current policies have scope for non-RMG players. Mr. Human Kabir, I, I draw your attention to these three words, non-RMG. RMG gets it, we don't. You need to extend the same facilities. We want all sectors to have these facilities. The third part, I want to congratulate Mr. Kabir for identifying the solution, connecting the factoring world to the EDF fund. The Export Development Fund is one of the greatest innovations we have had to reduce cost of uh, business. It's been a lifesaver for us in COVID. Please find a way to connect this so that we can get factoring at affordable rates. I think I'm going to stop here because I've used up my time. Thank you once again. Uh, Nazim, that was really interesting, and uh, I really like the way you went into the detail on what the risks are, because risk of not getting paid is just not getting paid. There are subsections, and all of these risks need to be addressed, uh, identified, and handled separately. So that was really wonderful. But just something strikes me. Do you, do you think with the COVID situation, uh, maybe uh, maybe this should be something we leverage to actually fast forward and updating these regulations? Because sure, the Export Development Fund is a natural home or a natural connection uh, for, uh, for the factoring product. Just interested in your feedback on that, if you don't mind, please. Well, absolutely. I think the EDF is a natural option, but I think we can also use the COVID crisis for policy innovation. I think we showed many, many things. For example, digital submission of import documents, which yeah. was done because of COVID. So Bangladesh is innovating on policy. One quick comment I would like to add. I think as Fazlul Bhai said, because of COVID, many of the customers today just don't have the funding lines in place, number one to yep. do the old payment terms. But the yep. second one is that the new guys who are actually performing online, if yep. we don't have factoring and we don't have flexible payment terms, we just can't access the only part of the industry which is growing, which are people like Amazon who will not open LC. We need yep. to drop ship from the US or from the UK. So how do we get our goods there if we have to do this LC or TT advance or CAD? So if you can create this innovation on open account, we can access the only part of the market that is growing better and stronger, which is online and e-com. Thank yeah. you. You're absolutely correct. For actually globally for Swift trade messaging in 2020, it experienced for trade messaging, it experienced the most significant drop ever, uh, about 12%. So your figures are absolutely spot on and your advice and guidance is so, so welcome. So moving forward, uh, moving forward, uh, now we will turn to another industry, okay? And uh, I'm talking to Mr. Jashem Udim Ahmed, a Bangladesh Plastic Goods Manufacturers and Exporters Association, BPGME. A. And uh, we will have your insights and then I'll come back to Habib for the result of our poll. So we'll have one more speaker, Habib, before we come back to you. Over to you, Mr. Ahmed. When he's also not there. He's not there. Okay. Well then, Atar, thank you so much for your support and keeping me aware of what's happening. I, I really, really appreciate it. So that brings me back to you, Habib, just for a moment. Uh, we had the poll question from ADB regarding the gender. Uh, my guess is that it's a lot more male than female and we have something to do in the gender balance. But please present the results and let's see how it turned out. Okay, sure. We'll do it right now. So right, uh, I think no surprise here, participation in our event is 70% uh, uh, male, so dominant. So uh, we need to work on more engagement uh, of the female audience, uh, which is uh, really, really, really interesting. So this figure is something we'll bear in mind and ADB will record it. Uh, now moving forward uh, with our program, and uh, a, a new uh, a sector as well, completely different sector, which I think will be really, really interesting. Uh, Mr. Imdi Namul Huda, Chief Finance Officer and a Finance Officer, though the right officer for Manceptive Pharmaceuticals, uh, looking to for your insights, observations, and maybe some guidance, because we're getting a lot of guidance today. Over to you. Thank you. Welcome. 
Uh, many thanks, uh, Vincent. Uh, the local pharmaceuticals companies in Bangladesh are doing very well. You know, at the moment, 97% of local requirements are made by the local manufacturers. Wow. You can understand the contribution of this industry from an example. Yeah. If we compare with the Vietnam, the population is around 97 million. It okay. imports USD 3 billion worth of medicines per year. On the other hand, in case of Bangladesh, the population is around 180 million, around two times of Vietnam, but Bangladesh imports medicine not more than 300 million per year. So you can understand the contribution of the local industry. In addition to meeting local requirements, local pharmaceuticals companies are also exporting medicines to various countries. Though the export amount is not remarkable, but the growth rate of pharma export is moving apart. It is more than 15% per year. So according to the last data of Export Motion Bureau, in last eight months, Bangladesh exported medicine to 119 countries. If we analyze the list of the countries, most of the countries are less regulated and yeah. do not have sound financial and legal infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Here is our main challenges. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult for us to find a right importer, partner, or distributor in those countries and assess its credit position and get a good credit reference. Yeah. For this reason, in most of the cases, we prefer cash prepayment or confirmed LC for the foreign exchange transition. Export under open account credit terms is a good option, high risk option, but in the present business scenario, it will not be used widely, what we think. However, in case of export to highly regulated and developed country, where our industry export will increase substantially in next few years, since some certifications like US FDA or EU have already been achieved by a few companies, export under open account credit terms will be very much beneficial or helpful. However, the policy is nice, can safeguard the interest of the exporters, but when it comes to the implementation, we think a lot more needs to be done here, especially our local banking partners need to come forward to build a network with the foreign counterparts so that we can bring our foreign distributors or importers in this system. Thanks to ICC and ADB for having this useful session. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you very much for such a wonderful uh, presentation, Mr. Uh, MD Naimal, who the Chief Finance Officer of Inceptive Pharmaceuticals. I really am amazed. I didn't realize the contribution of the pharmaceutical uh, sector. And uh, it, it's quite staggering and uh, congratulations. But at the same time, you highlighted that there are challenges and that while we're on the right direction, we're not actually moving fast enough, okay? And uh, that we need to move a little bit faster, maybe a lot faster. So now I'm going to move on. Uh, I see Atar there. Does he want to make a comment or an observation? Yeah, because I, I see Dr. Rubanahop is there online. So maybe oh, you can- Wonderful Atar. There. Thank you, Atar. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. I, I will continue. I will go back. Thank you. Um, so it, this is wonderful news because a, a, a really key speaker for us uh, was, was not going to speak, but now uh, we are very, very fortunate. So now I, I will turn to Dr. Rubana Hook, President, Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Exporters Association. And we're so delighted to have you with us and wish to hear your words of wisdom, insights on this journey, on the open account journey we're working on together. Dr. Rubana. Oh. Thank you very much. I'm not switching my video on because the net is very, very poor. And That's I'm going okay. to keep, and I'm going to be brief, but I can only, I can only tell you, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to join you all. Uh, I can only tell you that, you know, we were under a lot of pressure from our buyers for open account. Yeah. So, you know, especially Inditex and the likes of Inditex, everybody wanted an uh, open account because um, traditionally and historically, these um, buyers, these brands and retailers have been with us for a very, very long time. So there is uh, 
there is a relationship, a pre-existing relationship anyway. So for, for these buyers, for these brands, uh, an open account automatically gave, um, it was, you know, kind of, it was automatically very beneficial for them. Yep. So there, but of course there are also dangers. So when Bangladesh Bank came up with the circular, um, it actually um, was seriously beneficial for everyone because, uh, because uh, uh, um, because um, number one, um, buyers wanted flexibility and we wanted to be of service to the buyers. The only problem about this whole thing is now that open account has been introduced, many uh, unproven retailers are also wanting that. So when that happens, let us also remind ourselves that Bangladesh at any point of time uh, has a, a receivable of $8 billion. Yep. So automatically, you know, our, our, our payments are not secure. There is a huge uh, risk in, in, in extending credit to, to our, um, our, our, our brands, which are not known. Therefore, um, you know, we also need to have um, some kind of somebody to underwrite our risks and nobody has the appetite to uh, to underwrite any of the Bangladeshi manufacturers risk right now considering COVID so it's difficult for us to keep up with the um, you know the 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 contradictory pulls rather that we have on one hand we're absolutely welcoming open account and on the other you know we are also um, we also have the danger of exposing ourselves to further vulnerabilities. So in order to uh, draw a line between the two and in order to be more um, effective, mm -hmm. uh, what we are going to do is we're going to be proposing um, a buyer's rating um, because uh, you know Bangladesh uh, for the last four decades has done a lot of business and uh, most of the buyers are known to us. Of course, there are new markets, but somebody has to do the credit rating properly. And it should not just be an external credit rating agency, it should also be an internal one. So, you know, we have to, and also at the same time, the contracts, it's just not only about open contract, but the other, there are lots of loopholes in the contracts, which often also um, wreaks havoc in our lives. And, and COVID has, has uh, sort of uh, made us absolutely helpless and because of that, we remain uh, uh, literally, um, our, our hands are tied and uh, we remain at the mercy of the brands and retailers. So I don't know how Bangladesh is going to be um, going from strength to strength at this point of time, because in a world where buyers, retailers expect, brands expect complete flexibility, um, how do Bangladesh Factors secure themselves. So uh, this is a million dollar yep. question. And so far, I don't have the answer. But I, all I can say is open account, uh, and especially when initiated by Bangladesh, um, I, I think it's a marvelous, um, you know, progress. And, uh, and we should be taking full advantage of it. Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rubana Hook, and uh, uh, we could hear you loud and clear, and uh, your words made an awful lot of sense, like open account, great initiative, but as you said yourself, it works wonderfully for the pre-existing relationships where both parties have a vested interest in the continuity of the business, but when new players come into the market, the risk, the exposure, etc., can be quite high, okay, and uh, really, really well said, loud and clear, we're uh, heading in the right direction, but we've many steps that we had to take. So now we need to get some answers to our questions and some feedback. And we're going now to our, our commercial banks for a response. So let's get underway. And I will turn to uh, Saeed Mahuba Rahman, immediate uh, past chairman association of banks in Bangladesh and the uh, managing director and CEO of Mutual Trust Bank. So Mr. Rahman, from the introduction, from the feedback from the grassroots operators, so many sectors, uh, where do you think we are and, uh, and what might be the next steps to make what's a good initiative a better initiative? Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mahbur Rahman, uh, President of ICC Bangladesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Biak Chairman, Mr. Rumi Ali, and thanks everyone <clears throat> for arranging this seminar. 
basically, if you look at open account, as everybody is saying, it has a demand. Definitely, it's a need. But open account is uh, one of the most traditional trade payment method as well. Almost uh, 80% or 85% of the global trade has been done through open account. And, but in respect of Bangladesh, is is other around. It's other around. And, and people across the globe considers Bangladesh uh, they're like, it's a documented credit business. This is a documented credit business. And according to what is happening, all trade finance and trade payment risk method mitigation products bundle for documented credit are mainly driven by the correspondent banks. And, 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 the, and the policy change that has happened as well, where open trade accounts are permitted, but unfortunately, uh, the entire world, whether everybody's aware of it, I'm not sure whether our uh, all exporters are aware of it, I'm not sure. So what is happening, we need to have, first of all, uh, to have the global awareness about these policy changes. So the new products suitable to the circular are added in the corresponding banking product basket, as well as new financiers like uh, factoring companies, uh, insurance companies, and the other trade financiers all enter into the system. So that is the need, uh, the, the present uh, scenario. Yep. Yes. Uh, what we have seen, yes, yeah, so what uh, Rubana Hawk is saying, and also that we have seen to start with the export business, we have seen it used to be like master LC, but it mm -hmm. has moved from there now. Mm -hmm. It is now like an export contract, mm -hmm. where basically it is not a binding on the part of the importer to pay. So exporters always was running a risk because uh, they were exporting, yes. And yes, it was the under the bank control, the documents are coming to bank, but the export is always at risk. And you can see that nowadays what is happening during COVID time, we can see that uh, in many of the cases, uh, the importers have not paid or they're asking for discount. So exporters basically are exposed. What Dr. Prashanta has said in respect to open account transaction, we have some, some, some uh, level of, uh, is, uh, is, is somebody ensuring the payment that is there, the import factor. He's ensuring he's giving a limit on the basis of that he's exporting and the export bank is paying the money without recourse definitely. But there are some level of comfort on the part of the exporter where as soon as he's uh, uh, producing a BL, he's getting paid. And what is happening now, the current practice we can see in some of the cases for an user's bill as well, the yep. exporter is getting paid by paying a discount of 1%. Mm -hmm. So for him, it is still preferred option. Yes, there are some risks involved in it, yeah, but yeah. in case of, uh, in case of, uh, uh, if you go for a, an, an open account position uh, uh, road, he will have to pay a certain amount of money as money. commission. Now, what is happening? What is the current status? Current is the approximately about eight to ten banks have already uh, been associated with FCI. Like Mutual Trust Bank has already signed an agreement with FCI. Okay, uh, and also they have. Uh, like uh, individual factoring companies, people have already signed. Banks are ready to facilitate customer factoring demand. Banks are also in dialogue with correspondent banks to facilitate to open account transactions covered by standby LC or ortho co op co acceptance of bill as well. They are also in discussion with multilateral sides, especially ADB, ADB how they can yeah. facilitate that yeah. supply chain financing initiative in Bangladesh. And exporters also slowly, slowly re responding to the factoring products. So that's how it is. So we are okay. looking forward to the uh, good, better future. That's when we'll be able to do it. But in, at present, the uh, EDF is really playing a big factor. And, and because yeah. of the EDF, we are seeing that this uh, open account transaction is not getting popular because the EDF is very, very cheap. Yeah. And, and even the usance bill, usance bills also are coming under EDF. So in the process, because of this thing, uh, this, this is not getting popular. I think once the COVID is over, when the EDF is go back to its normalcy, people might get uh, interested into it. So till that time, we need to see how things get uh, progress. Thank you very much. Th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rahman. And uh, ag again, coming from the banking sector, there's kind of a message here. Uh, there's a wonderful export development fund that works really well. Uh, of course, it's been around for quite a long time. Factoring is a modern product. It's trying to address the same product, advancing funds to the exporter in a different methodology. So maybe we need to start looking at how we are building the bridges between these two components. And moving on from a private commercial <laughs> bank, now uh, Vincent, we will- Vincent, 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 Sorry to interrupt. I, we just no got our principal. 
Our president just now got a message from Mr. Jashimuddin Ahmed that he has been affected by COVID, so he's in the hospital. So, Jashimuddin Ahmed, the president of uh, Plastic Industries Association and the chairman of Bengal Corporation, Bank of Bengal Bank Corporation. He oh. is in the hospital affected by COVID. Oh dear. So let's pray for him for let's, his early let's, recovery. Uh, let's pray for him and, and, and keep him in our thoughts and, and prayers. And uh, thank you, Atar. So moving on from uh, a private commercial bank, very active, very active in trade finance uh, in Bangladesh now to a, a, a public sector bank. So uh, we're looking to uh, Mr. Muhammad Shams Ul Islam, Managing Director and CEO at Granny Bank Limited from the perspective, your perspective, where we are and where we may need to go and maybe some of the benefits and challenges. Thank you very much. Is our speaker with us or is he on mute? <laughs> Atar, are we our speaker? I will, I, I think I'll go ahead. Yes? Atar? Okay, well, uh, as before, we can always change the schedule a little bit, but we're going to move on now to Mr. Imranul Hook, Managing Director of uh, DACA Bank Limited. And DACA Bank was mentioned earlier in the present presentations about innovation in this area. So Mr. Amarul Hook, Managing Director, Dr. Bank Limited, we're, we're looking forward to hearing your words and your insights. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, ICC Bangladesh for inviting me to say a few words on it. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Mahbub Rahman sir, Muhammad Ali sir, and, my, uh, and all other dignitaries who are present here in this important topic of uh, open account transaction, facilitating uh, ex export and other trades. Uh, very interesting, open account transaction, which is uh, not very uh, old to us. It is new, I should say, as we all know that most of the transaction happening from Bangladesh are done under letter of credit. We are more acquaintance to those type of transaction. And, and as uh, Nasim Manzur was uh, telling that globally, this transaction is uh, not becoming popular. It has already become popular and uh, almost 90% of the trade of the globe are taking uh, place under open account transaction. So it is huge. So if we do not do the practice now, probably we will lose out the comp competitiveness and we will lose out the market opportunity which we see forward in the future. Uh, yes, RICS is associated there. So uh, at, uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, our regulator, the Bangladesh Bank, who has off late come up with a circular for uh, doing transaction of uh, trade under open account, especially the exports. But, it is, uh, but, 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 but there is a condition also uh, tagged with it, which is, uh, which says that uh, it should have a payment guarantee or some sort of insurance as should come up with uh, with whichever transaction which we do under open account. It it again associate with cost. What we want to do is is to reduce the cost. So this is one thing we should uh, look at as uh, Rubana Ahmed, uh, Rubana Haq was rightly saying that at one particular time, if we see our receivable part, it is $8 billion. So it's, it is a big risk associated with our export proceed. Yep. We cannot uh, eliminate or we cannot ignore the risk which is, uh, is also associated with these receivable. So it's, it, it is huge. It has to be covered up with the, uh, I mean, uh, what the Bangladesh Bank has said that it should cover up with either payment guarantee or with some sort of payment undertaking. But at okay. the same time, in order to reduce the cost, again, I will say what Rubana Haq has said, which is yeah. very right, we can at least eliminate this cost or uh, taking off such uh, export uh, I mean, payment guarantee or payment undertaking, if we do some transaction for buyers which have got good credit rating by international credit rating company, 
I think this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean the, I mean the Bangladesh Bank, which has tagged that every uh, transaction of uh, of uh, uh, transaction under open account should have payment undertaking. I think for the buyers who have got good credit rating, we can always eliminate this cost and the cost uh, which is uh, uh, which has been uh, asked by Bangladesh Bank that six month LIBOR plus uh, 3.5 3.5 percent. Yeah, it can also be tagged with the EDF rate, which 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 is given by Bangladesh Bank, as Mahbub Rahman has also said that it is a popular yeah. transaction, yeah. and Nasim Manzur has also said that it is it is one thing which we can look at. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, that that was a wonderful insight. Uh, and again, kind of talking about the, the EDF and uh, how that may be. Uh, and I just got a question here uh, uh, that came into me uh, and it said, uh, what is wrong with the EDF? I, I, I think it, no one is saying anything is wrong with the EDF. I think people are saying the idea and the application, it's a very good idea, but actually maybe it can be looked at and modernized a little and maybe a bridge can be built to link it to the factoring product. That's just some of the ideas is actually coming through. Uh, moving forward, uh, uh, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Emerald Hook, for those uh, words of wisdom. And you again highlighted the word payment undertaking. I might come back to that myself a, a little bit later. But now moving on to our next speaker, now a global perspective, uh, we're going to turn to the country head of global trade and receivable finance at HSBC, Mr. Mohammed Shadouziman. And uh, Mohammed, uh, over to you. Looking forward to hearing your words. Thank you very much. Am I audible? You are audible, loud and clear. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, you know, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I think I'm, I feel a real honor to be amongst the distinguished panels, uh, you know, members, discussions that we have today. So, you know, I'll be very brief uh, and I'll try to like, you know, make it uh, as quick as possible. Uh, and uh, I'll be, I think, you know, first starting by thanking Central Bank you know, I think like, you know, it has already been told by many of the uh, participants discussed that Central Bank has taken a very good initiative in terms of issuing that circular. The circular is to me, one of the most significant circular that we have uh, seen Central Bank issue, issuing in, 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 in recent past. And uh, three, three reasons, uh, you know, that I can cite, and then I will very quickly like, you know, jump into the issue uh, you know, but what we are we fast enough? So I'll try to uh, address that. So for three reasons, I think like you know, this is a very significant circular. Number one is this is the first time central bank has recognized the term open account in any kind of its literature circular oh. and regulation. Okay. Very important. Number two is it has opened up the option to attract or access international funds okay. for our exporters. And thirdly which uh, I think like, you know, there is a fourth. The third is, you know, it has recognized uh, or it has allowed electronic transmission of documents, right? So electronic transmission of documents, uh, it says in, in the circular that the exporters can electronically transmit the documents, send the documents to uh, the, the importers, to the buyers. Actually, that is going to pave our way for uh, electronic presentation in the imports as well. So these are the three main reasons. I think this is uh, one of the most significant circulars. Now, uh, you know, what success we have seen so far. Mm -hmm. I'm sure like, you know, as you can understand from all the, you know, speakers, we are not there. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where we wanted to go, we are not there. What is yeah. the reason? We have had some success, you know, we were HSBC, uh, I think we, we completed our first transaction under this circular within mm -hmm. one week of the issuance. Oh. And we have also you know, seen many of the uh, uh, private sector banks and international banks entering into agreement with factors. However, we have not seen the traction. Why? Number one, I think like in the lack of appetite from the foreign financial institution right at this moment is one of the issue. And as the circular says that in order for us to allow open account and subsequent you know, financing, there has to be an, some kind of a payment undertaking, payment coverage you know, given by a foreign financial institution. Okay. Now, the 
you know, uncertainty or negative uh, business outlook triggered by the pandemic, ongoing pandemic has made the foreign financial institutions a bit, you know, uh, shaky about providing those, uh, uh, those uh, you know, undertaking. Uh, we don't see major insurer, insurers like Euler Harmel's COFAS covering, you know, uh, transaction originated directly from Bangladesh. They do it if the exposure is booked somewhere else but not directly in Bangladesh. Uh, uh, Mr. Nasim Munzu talked about, uh, you know, the export uh, guarantee scheme uh, that we have in Bangladesh, which is very cumbersome. I think there is something we can do about it. And if we can team up with the inter international insurers, uh, we can have, uh, you know, uh, some uh, solution. We can like at least uh, go for uh, addressing that. Uh, then, you know, we talked about the pricing, even if we get some appetite, you know, the pricing that they are asking uh, in the foreign financial institutions, we are finding it, it difficult. We are finding it difficult. The suppliers also finding it difficult to justify. Okay. Because this is a big cost. And for, you know, in order for addressing that, in the, the proposal that we have been hearing is about like, you know, somehow can we tag it with the EDF fund? I think okay. you know what we say yeah. here is that basically, if we could arrange that payment undertaking from a financial institution abroad, yeah. only the payment undertaking, not the subsequent yeah. financing. financing. And yeah. then if we could attract or ask for the funding from central bank through the yeah. EDF, then yeah. you know the EDF rate can come into place. And that might you know, make the entire cost, you know, the, the all-in cost for the supplier a little lesser. Okay, well, Muhammad, uh, if you don't mind me asking, in, in terms of the cost, uh, I was looking at some of the documentation and I, I was confused, so I'm hoping you can, you can clarify me. There is an issue regarding in the, uh, the withholding tax, um, and I just couldn't make sense of it at all. Uh, it's quite confusing. Maybe you can elaborate. Yeah, you know, I was about to like, you know, talking about that, you know, oh, the, okay. the income tax or the ordinance that we have, I think 1984, yeah. it says that, you know, we need to to deduct a withholding tax of 20% against okay. any remittance that we make outside in the form of commission or fees or interest. Okay. So, you know, already like, you know, the cost that they are asking, the foreign financial institution asking is high. If you factor this 20% in, yeah. then it becomes even costlier. Ultimately, this cost needs to be borne by the supplier. And it's a real so something like as well. Yes. Okay, yeah. sorry, so go ahead. go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, I think like that's the point I wanted to cover. And the last point is uh, I wanted to cover is like, you know, uh, still, I think I think it's it's for us, the wider banking community is still a learning curve. Yeah. Uh, something like, you know, that we have uh, kind of, we're trying to adopt and uh, it will take some time for us to go up to the speed. And for that, uh, you know, events like what we are having today, you know, best practice sharing, uh, and trainings could really, really, really help. So just one, one last yes, point I wanted to like, you know, uh, I, I, like, you know, raise or, yes. you know, talk about, or a, a thought, uh, you know, maybe it could be something like, you know, thought provoking is about the cost, the overall cost, the suppliers to suppliers, it's not like, you know, the payment undertaking cost or the financing cost, the all-in cost. So yeah. one of the areas like, you know, we have been hearing from the, uh, you know, retailers that, mm -hmm. you know, we, we need to go for, uh, open account. Yes. Now, for the same exporter, when we go on to or our supplier go on to procure raw materials, those have to be done through LCs. Oh. Right? Okay. So if if that you know yeah. the regulation allows the regulation allows to have that importation without LC. However, those LCs are not often accepted or non-LCs or you know, but without LC are not ac acceptable to the, uh, to the suppliers. And sometimes those suppliers are also nominated by the buyers. So if we can like, you know, pave that way of yep. having the importation done without LC, then as a bank, I will yep. be more interested to extend you know, that service to my customer, even if there is no payment coverage on the other hand. So something that, you know, uh, I think like, you know, food, food for thought, uh, food for thought. we can think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Muhammad, thank you so much. Uh, that was really wonderful. Like all our speakers, like all our speakers. Yeah. And, you, 
and you're absolutely right. Just a second after, I'll come back to you. And uh, and you're right. Uh, international institutions have actually cut limits, so that has really made things are really really difficult. But again, I want to thank ADB. ADB has actually increased its limits to cover trade and now into supply chain finance for Bangladesh. And Bangladesh is now, I think, the number one country in terms of uh, participation in the ADB's program. So there is some good partnership there. But you're absolutely correct. Atar, please. Yeah, sorry, uh, Mr. No Samsul Islam. Samsul Islam was waiting because he, he told me that earlier that he has an appointment at 4.15 or so. So he had to leave. And uh, same with our ICT Banking Commission Chairman, Mr. Rumi Ali. He has left because he has another appointment. Now, now okay. it is for you to continue with the your session. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, we, we, we missed uh, uh, Mr. Islam from uh, Granny Bank. Okay, not to worry. We have had a wonderful session so far. I'm going to be really, really short and just make uh, one or two of my observations. And again, just my, 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 my own observations. Uh, uh, the journey is underway. The journey is a good journey. Uh, there are opportunities and there are challenges. And as Nazim actually pointed out, the letter of credit, I think he said it's dead. I wouldn't say it's dead, but actually it's it is, it is withdrawing from the market. And uh, not just because of the price, but, but because sometimes letters of credit are not as reliable as we'd like them to be. That appears to be the feedback we're actually getting, the feedback we're getting from the market. But an interesting thing is when we talk about a payment undertaking, something that uh, people aren't really highlighting is that, just to give you an example, in the United States, uh, going back 20 years, and I don't want to go back too far, but actually commercial letters of credit were so, so, so popular. Now they're nearly gone. But actually what's very interesting, the usage of standby letters of credit issued by the banks to cover ongoing or even new or fairly new transactions has grown and gone through the roof. So the use of a standby letter of credit and a standby letter of credit subject to ICC rules or ICC endorsed rules, ISP 98 is something, I'm not saying it's the recipe for everything, but it wasn't really mentioned today. So that's just another little ingredient uh, we're going to put in the pot today. Okay, put in the pot today. And now when I go locally, but maybe I'm out of date, my most, uh, my, I, I like to read, I like everything about Bangladesh. So I read regulations in Bangladesh and uh, I see mention of letters of credit, commercial letters of credit, documentary credit, payment guarantees, but I don't see the word standby letter of credit, okay? So maybe that's another little thing we actually need to uh, look at. So from the wonderful speakers, the wonderful introduction, um, I'm going to back to where we started. Uh, 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 unfortunately, Humin Kabir, Executive Director, Bangladesh Bank, couldn't be here, but we had a wonderful presentation from Pre Dr. Prasanta Bangjari, Professor and Director, Bangladesh Institute of Banking. So Dr. Bangjari, maybe you would have some feedback or collection of, of uh, your thoughts on what was presented by the grassroots operators. Doctor. You're mute, we can't hear you, sir. So thank you very much. Very Welcome nice, back. very nice points raised by the corporate sector and as well as I think bankers, they have given their, uh, they have given the response very accordingly. So let me just talk about the few points. Yeah. First thing, uh, as it is mentioned that awareness is very important. Sometimes from the Bangladesh part, they want to make the collaboration with the foreign parts. As uh, a managing director of Dhaka Bank, he has mentioned that. So awareness is required for the corporate units in Bangladesh, as well as in the foreign countries where our more export is concentrated. Second is that when there is a policy is coming, actually I did my PhD in the international factory. That's why I, I, I was always interested to launch these services. Bangladesh Bank always they're seeking, they're seeking some sort of request or pressure from the corporate sector. So points which are raised today, say regarding the EDF, re regarding the credit trading agency of the, I mean, unknown company, then export under the open account. Uh, that is, it is for the export, but why not import it? That's a very important point raised by, because if you can do the factoring for the importer also, I strongly believe that cost of fund, cost of doing the business will be reduced from our part also. This is the very nice way mentioned that uh, export factoring at the same time we can do for the import factoring also. So 
uh, Vincent, you have uh, raised one issue that LC will not be going. I mean, in the future world, what my, my understanding is telling that for the capital goods where export will not be, export and import will not be done very frequently, LC yes. will be there. Of course. But for the consumer goods where very frequently export and import will be doing, importer do not like to import more, I mean, to open the LC because very frequently they need to open the uh, letter of credit. So in the future world, what will be done? For the capital goods, you'll be finding that LC is there. And for the yeah. consumer goods, you'll be finding that definitely factoring is there. Yeah. Now the issue is, um, say for the insurance company, for the foreign banks, but for the insurance company and foreign banks, there is a problem is that they will be giving you the guarantee only for one event. <laughs> but input factor will be giving a guarantee for a particular period of time, say, you can say that one year. So by keeping exporter under this limit, they can export as many times they want. Just only condition is that under this limit. So uh, Dr. Rabinahak also has mentioned very nicely 7.8 billion. So if yeah. you just export the open account without any guarantee, yeah. so definitely you'll be facing the very, I mean, you'll be inviting the, I mean, just problems for the country. So uh, the I, for the EDF fund, I do agree with you. I, I, I'm very sure that if from the corporate sector will be placing request to the Bangladesh Bank, then Bangladesh Bank will come forward, that yeah. is to connect with the export factoring and as well as EDF fund also. So these are the observation I have made. So, but yeah. very nice points is there. I'll be trying to make this, uh, to summarize this, and I'll be trying to place to the, our I mean, uh, head of the core committee and respected deputy governor of Ahmed Jawa. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Banjari, and a very well summarized, a very concise, and you are absolutely right. Uh, the LC may be in demise, but for capital goods, larger transactions, it's not going to disappear completely. There is a role. There's a role for all of these products, okay? And the roles are actually changing. Uh, in terms of what's happening in other countries is the use of the standby LC covering part of the exposure for a 12-month period is evolving, where people are kind of covering part of the risk, prepared to take a risk. But as Chairman Ali said at the beginning, you will need to understand the risk and be able to categorize the risk before you can actually do it. So having had your feedback, and as our Chairman Ali is not here, uh, Atar Rapman, uh, Secretary General of ICC Bangladesh. Atar, um, I would like you to join us and uh, to maybe uh, share your insight, your feedback on the session, and maybe a little summary of what we might do next to provide expertise and technical assistance in this open account arena. Atar. Thank you, Vincent. But before you go for that, yes, of course. would you like to have some questions from the audience? If, if there are uh, any questions which uh, may be addressed to some of the our speakers, say if they want to respond, if there is no no question, then we can probably. Uh, yeah. Surprise. Well, I, I, I will I will read out a few of the questions, but I think have been answered. Uh, but maybe may, a bit. But maybe people would like to answer. Uh, someone asked a question about what can be done about the costs to bring down the costs of financing for uh, exporters in Bangladesh. And uh, does any, I know this was mentioned already, but does anyone want to add anything? And then someone asked, what is wrong with the e uh, export fund, the export development fund? But I think I've answered that. Nothing really wrong, but maybe it needs to be looked at, modernized and connected with the factoring. But anyone have any ideas on what can be done on the costs? A few people have asked this question. Anyone? Vincent, uh, maybe I'll be repeating about what, no, what I worry. said. Don't yeah. Worry. So uh, one is like, you know, tagging uh, this uh, export leg, uh, you know, uh, financing with EDF could be one of the, you know, uh, ways of reducing the cost. And, uh, you know, by having, uh, you know, more insurance companies interested into the market, uh, you know, would, would definitely help. If we could get uh, ADVs and IFCs coming in in providing that payment undertaking, we'll definitely, oh. you know, definitely improve, you know, uh, the yep. credit, credit, credit yep. you know, risk, uh, you know, for for us, and we will be able to offer a better financing rate. 
And also I talked about like, you know, if the other end of the transaction, that is the importation, if that can be done somehow in open account, that will reduce the cost for the suppliers as well. Okay, very, very practical. Um, uh, Vincent, think, maybe, yes. maybe, Atar, Sir, yes. yeah, maybe Sir, Sir Mahmoud Rahman or Imran Ullah could highlight us on this also from their banking oh, point of view. Of course, actually, of course. Actually, thank you, thank you, Atar Rahman, sir. Uh, I would just like to add one thing that yes. uh, since, since uh, open account transaction, which is uh, the circular, which is given by Bangladesh Bank needs to have a payment undertaking. Very good. Uh, needs to have a payment undertaking from uh, from uh, from any 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 bank in abroad or a factoring company uh, or, or insurance company things like that but as uh, Rubana Haq, I'm again mentioning her name Rubana Haq said that yes. buyer rating is important if we can uh, if we can uh, eliminate this clause from the circular for those buyer who has got a good credit rating by international credit rating. I think that would be a help for, you know, for, for good buyer to uh, get transaction or open account at a lower cost. And that will help our exporter also to get the orders from all top ranking uh, uh, buyers or vendors from the garments which we are exporting. Okay, very, very interesting. Uh, so something I guess for consideration and uh, just to add to that, a comment that we got here again was, uh, you know, uh, what exactly is a payment undertaking? That is actually a good question, you know? Is it, a, is it a, a factoring? Is it? Okay, it is, of course, but uh, you need to read the terms and conditions of the factoring agreement. Uh, is it a payment guarantee? It is, of course. You need to read the terms and conditions. The same goes for uh, a standby letter of credit. Uh, other question was regarding factoring. Uh, if there is a contractual dispute, uh, is it still without recourse? And the answer to that is, uh, generally speaking, yes, but you really need to read the terms and conditions of the factoring agreement because the event of a commercial dispute between the parties, uh, if, it's, uh, if, uh, if it's in receivable finance, can have a very sometimes unexpected unexpected uh, result. So I think what I can say is, but I'm not finished yet. I'm going to turn the floor back to our panelists and our speakers and even our, our, our guests who are, who, who are viewing. Uh, we're on the journey. The journey is going in the right direction. Very positive steps have been taken. There have been some challenges. This webinar for me was better than the last one because in this one a little bit later, we're getting more granular detail on steps we might be able to take to make it better, where the last one was more problems, okay? Whereas this one is progress, but some steps we can take to actually make the situation better. So um, I'll turn back to you, Arthur. Our, our president is still with us. If you would like to uh, give his feedback on the event, it would really be welcome. It would be really great. Uh, but we need to unmute you, uh, uh, president. Thank you. Vincent. Thank you. There is a gentleman from ADB. Yes, that's what I was about to ask. Ken is there, sir. Ken is, Ken, is in, Ken is from Manila, and uh, Stephen was in from Canada. He was four, five o'clock in the morning that he spoke. <laughs> but Ken is in Manila, so the time difference is only about two hours. We, we are glad that Ken can, can be with us, okay? Thank you so much, Mr. Mavogur. Yeah, um, I just wanted to provide a little bit of highlight what we are doing at the back end to support from ADB side. We, as you said, last year, we managed to increase our support to Bangladesh uh, as part of trade finance program. And the total amount reached out to around $1.4 billion levels, which is around 60% year over year increase. So wow. we are hoping to continue our support on that front. Um, some of these things which we are already discussing falls into our existing pro product program parameters. So with our partner banks, we can still provide them direct financing for these export receipt transactions. But on the back end, what we are trying doing is, um, unfortunately, as of now, without with current program parameters, we cannot take direct corporate risk and issue this payment undertaking directly in favor of the banks in Bangladesh. However, what we are trying to do is in line with your suggestion on SPLC front, mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. to our international banking partners who are already working with the 
uh, big uh, RMG buyers initially uh, who are dealing with the uh, big buyers in Europe or in the US uh, who are dealing with them to who have credit limits for these buyers yep. to issue standby letters of credit in favor of Bangladeshi banks to cover the payment risk of these buyers for a yes. payment term like you know one year or six months with then of course certain threshold and at the back of this guarantee our partner banks in Bangladesh can um, provide factoring basically mm -hmm. uh, for the domestic suppliers where ADB can add value is that to partner up international banks to provide risk participation to those international banks so we can take risk of these big corporates, international corporates at the back end, but we need a bank partner. So ADB cannot facilitate this flow directly by itself, issuing the bank guarantee. However, if we can identify the big international banks who have this appetite and where they, as they need, ADB can come in to fund them or to provide risk participation, which may in turn decrease their cost where they are issuing these SPLCs in favor of local banks. So it's work in progress. Uh, right. It's not definitely 100% in ADB control as well. We need to find the right partners. But we are still working towards this direction. Hopefully, that when there is some progress, uh, we will inform our partner banks. But I just wanted to, again, thank everyone for their time. I, I agree with you. I think this one was much better than the initial one. I think we are getting there. But yep. um, in, in the guidance of Ator and Mr. Mahbubur and our Bank of Bangladesh colleagues, um, we are ready to support, you know, through technical assistance or trainings, or also on the program side with different solutions, hopefully in time. So again, thank you for your time and thanks for a chance to uh, participate. Thank you. Uh, th th thank you very, very much, Khan. And, 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 and think, uh, thinking about a 60% increase when everyone else is pulling back is really commendable and, and well done. But just to highlight, the perspective here is we're kind of thinking of the US, exporting to the US, we're thinking to Europe. But actually using the ability of, of the ADB, regionally, et cetera, if there's importers in these countries that you would consider as not you just don't know I have enough intelligence to decide are they credit worthy or not. Well, ADB may know their banks and they can actually get their banks to issue standby LCs, not just US, the big banks, but even interregionally. So this is something we need to explore a little bit as well, I, I think going forward, Can Yeah. So Atar, uh, you're the next person on the schedule. No, uh, can I turn no, to you but, and, yes. No, but I think I, we should request our president to say a few words before. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, wonderful, in. great. Mr. Thank President. You, Thank you. Thank you, Vincent, for your support and joining us from, um, from a distance, but as if you are in Dhaka. <laughs> but, 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 and particularly, I'm very, very, very um, happy that the, our bankers who are really involved in the whole process they are also very positive in that sense. But at the same time, what Rubana has mentioned, that about six, seven billion dollars worth of export proceeds is still stuck up yes. under the system. If, if that is the so it's going to give a, a big alarm. So therefore, it's very essential that these those importers has to have their credit rating uh, so, so that the exporters from Bangladesh can re rely upon them. That is very, very important from that point of view. And Bangladesh Bank ha has to evaluate all these. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is so, much, so many conditions that it may not be implemented, mm -hmm. but uh, day and day out, the uh, internationally, globally, the, um, uh, the these um, uh, uh, tra transactions are not only popular, it is the actually 85%, more than 85% are now handled by this system. Yes. So we should have to go for it, but we should have to see that our interests are also protected. From that point of view, the factoring and the insurance, uh, that is there. And we, from ICC Bangladesh, we have also had our um, discussions and seminar with those factoring companies um, from France or some, something. Mm -hmm. Atour, is it from France? Uh, yeah, no, he's from Netherlands, FCI, FCI. FCI from, from Netherlands. Yeah. So we have discussed with them and such some arrangements 
for this in order to protect the interest of the exporter from Bangladesh. At the same time, those who are buying from Bangladesh, their, their interest also should be protected. So from that point of view, this has to be uh, seen, but we have no choice, um, hardly, that the letters of credit are a, is, um, is a system of gone by days. And it has to be um, on the open account system. And it has, to, so that, but continually we should have to try to see that uh, it is a protection, uh, enough and adequate protection is given to, to the exporters uh, from a given country. Thank you very much, Vincent, for your wonderful conduction of this um, webinar. And you have been um, supporting Bangladesh in a number of areas, including the training of our bankers. Thank you so very much. Uh, th thank you very much, Mr. President, and uh, I really, really look forward to actually visiting Dhaka and seeing you hopefully in the in the very, very, very near future. Thank you very much. We, 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 we look forward. We look forward. <laughs> thank you, uh, Atar. Um, you always have some very good words to round up, so I'm just maybe suggesting our next step. So, Atar, I think we cannot go without hearing from you. Okay. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vincent. Okay. Can you hear me? Just one request for yeah, can yeah. You yes. forward ICC Bangladesh, ICC and FCI jointly because earlier also did so that we can make some policy and which, which can be placed before the Bangladesh Bank and for taking the immediate action. So if jointly we can do something, I think our very respected Mahuran Sara is there, Atorva is also always is working. So if jointly ICC Bangladesh and ICC International FCI and Bangladesh Bank, if you can jointly do any program, that would, would be helpful. I believe that for the policy making, depending on today's uh, issues, different issues. So thank you very much. That is my request to everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Benaki. Thank you very much for the suggestions. And I'll definitely we should be uh, in, in touch with you and be in cooperation okay. with the BIBM for doing the needful in this case. Well, thank you. Atar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for you have taken the trouble of staying with us from the beginning till the end. And uh, I would also like to thank Stephen Beck. He, 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 were, he didn't sleep. He woke up at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> to join us. And as Vincent was saying, actually the October 23 one was initial. And for the information of Dr. Banerjee, we are going step by step. The first one was with the bankers. Now this time we are doing it with the exporters and the bankers. And the next phase will be for the prof professionals, the, those who are really in the field working. And we have been in touch with Vincent Can. We are talking, discussing that, how do we improve the capacity of the, our bankers for the open account? What are the problems that they have? Unfortunately, Vincent is still in Dubai. He cannot come to Dhaka. Neither can can come to Dhaka because of the COVID. And it's probably going for another lockdown, the way it is. Things are getting worse here in Dhaka. So, but anyway, let's keep our fingers crossed and we hope that things will improve. And it is very heartening to hear that Ken has, has been, Ken and Stephen, both of them have been very positive in cooperating with ICC Bangladesh and also for the keen interest that they're showing for Bangladesh. And we will definitely go for next phase of trying to have webinar may not be that effective for the professional bankers, but physical as and when we can have the travel ban withdrawn, then we can arrange the regular training capacity building for the <coughs> banker, not only for the bankers, but also for the exporters, because these are the very essential things. and. Mr. Human Kobe became sick and only this morning he told me that, sorry, Atharva, I cannot join because I'm sick. And there was nobody else in the bank. So I requested Dr. Banerjee and he very kindly agreed. And he is there with us. So FCI, ICC Bangladesh and ICC UAE with the support of ADB definitely will be doing something uh, in the future to promote this and try to pursue the Bangladesh Bank to to modify the policy so that both export and import can be 
used for by factoring. So that is, as Dr. Banerjee said, factoring for import is also essential. Another thing was there also for this for can that uh, some people are saying that the credit rating of the country is also important for the foreign banks to ensure that they can provide the support so that they will they will not they will not be deprived of the payment. So this is something which we might be able to uh, sure. uh, follow up in the future. So with this, uh, I would again like to mention, because now that we have time, but I would mention all of you. Uh, first of all, our Honorable President, Mr. Mahabur Rahman, for being with us. Then Mr. Mohamed Rumi Ali, the Chairman of the ICC Banking Commission, and he's also the CEO of the Arbitration, Bangladesh International Arbitration Center and Chairman of AB, AB Bank. He is always trying to promote the arbitration, because that is very risky. Risk is there. So we have to take care of the risk for the LCs or open account system. Then Stephen Beck is there early morning from Canada. He joined us. Ken, thank you very much for joining us. And then Dr. Banerjee, thank you very much. We have Dr. Rubana Hawk. It is good that she could join us and give her, give her input to this very important. Actually, she is the one who wanted that we should have a uh, webinar with the exporters. So oh. it is at her request that we did it. And mm -hmm. she was the first one to confirm that she will join us. So sometimes something happens, the unfortunate things happen, then it will come. Mr. Mohammed Fuzlok, our chair, member of the ICC Bangladesh Executive Board. Then Sayyid Nasim Manzu, and he is also the one of the leading exporters of leather goods from Bangladesh. Then Mr. Joshimuddin Amir, unfortunately, he could not come, the president of BG. Uh, the uh, Bangladesh Plastic Manufacturers Association and chairman of the Bengal uh, Corporation Bank, Bengal Bank Corporation, new bank. This is just launched on the last week. This is mm -hmm. a new bank. Then uh, we have Naimul Huda, very promptly said about the pharmaceutical industry. So Mahabu Rahman, our good friend, well wisher, always is there. Mr. Emran Ulhaq, managing director, Dhaka Bank. He is also a member of ICC Banking Commission. Then Mr. Mohammad Shohidul Jaman, very, very positive things that he has said. It will be very useful for us. Unfortunately, we could not have Shamsul Alam, managing director of He was sitting with us. Yeah. He left at 4.10 or something like that. And last but not the least is, of course, our great actor, Vincent O'Brien, who is the director of ICC UAE, and Habib, Clarissa, Amrit from ADB, all of them. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. And lastly, the 400 participants who have Wonderful. joined us from 20 countries. I have checked the list. The Wonderful. maximum numbers are from Cambodia, Malaysia, India, Pakistan, and some people from Italy, USA are also there. So it is Wonderful. a widespread 20 countries, you know, something very good. And, uh, uh, and uh, this is something really very, very, and of course, I hope our media people are also there. A number of them are there, and uh, we'll be seeing the coverage tomorrow in the newspaper. Yes. So with this, and, uh, thank you. And at our, thank you. at our, yeah. at our, we, we might have seen that less than thirty percent of the participants uh, were ladies, and on our speakers, well, it was even less. But the contribution uh, of Dr. Rubana Huck was of the highest it's, caliber, of really. Course, of course. So it was wonderful. And, thank you. Yeah, I, I hope some of the Bangladesh Bank people, I also requested them that Mr. Humayun Kuhil could not come, but if they can join us, so they will be able to know that wonderful. what are the discussions that took place. And of course, Bena, Dr. Banerjee is there. So we together will prepare something note and send it to the central bank for their kind consideration that this is what is the outcome of the uh, webinar that we have. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you everyone, and uh, we're pretty much on time, so thanks for your participation, thanks for your contribution, our wonderful speakers, our president, it's so wonderful to see you here again, ADB and ICC Bangladesh, thank you, our session is over, take care, bye-bye now for now, bye thank guys, bye, bye everyone. Thank you. ICC UAE makes it possible.